In the 1990s, when the U.S. Air Force first thought about replacing its fifth-generation fighters, it seemed that there was simply nothing better than the F-22 Raptor. However, technology's come a long way over the past decades. Artificial intelligence, hypersonic weapons, drones, and the latest electronic warfare systems have all radically changed the principles of air combat. Therefore, the U.S. decided not to hesitate in responding to all these challenges by introducing the Boeing F-47, the first fighter aircraft developed under the Next Generation Air Dominance NGAD, program. Today, we'll be talking about what kind of machine this is and discuss how it can surprise its enemies. The NGAD program itself began as the Air Dominance Initiative from the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency, DARPA, back in 2014. As part of this initiative, the agency sought to study in detail possible future 2030s fighter aircraft concepts for the U.S. Air Force and Navy. Based on the research results, the Aerospace Innovation Initiative AII, was launched in 2015 with the goal of developing new experimental aircraft, the so-called X-Plane, to demonstrate technologies for future fighter aircraft. The DARPA initiative subsequently evolved into Air Superiority 2030, with a focus on creating a family of systems centered around the Penetrating Counter-Air PCA aircraft. And only in 2018 did all these plans come together, the program being called to create a new generation NGAD fighter. However, the change of names did not in any way affect the original goal to develop a worthy successor to the legendary Lockheed Martin F-22 Raptor. Moreover, two versions of the new fighter were being considered at once, Short range, focused on relatively short distances between potential combat areas in Europe, and long range, meeting the operational needs of the Indo-Pacific Theater where current U.S. Air Force fighters lack range and payload. The main idea remains the formation of a family of systems around the PCA with loyal comrades in the form of collaborative combat aircrafts CCA drones, performing the role of loyal wingman using manned-unmanned teaming MUM-T. Plus, the fighter will interface with all of the service's newest aircraft, including the latest Northrop Grumman B-21 Raider bombers. So it came as a shock to many experts that in 2024, the Air Force announced it would reboot NGAD to make sure the program was moving in the right direction. Air Force veterans and industry experts have expressed concern about the service's idea that the B-21 Raider could penetrate an enemy integrated air defense system, IADS, screen, even without the support of a manned NGAD fighter. John J.V. Venable, Air Force veteran and senior resident fellow at the Mitchell Institute, stated that this idea that you don't need someone going in and sweeping out the threat in front of a B-21 is absolutely catastrophic. Since this long-awaited program went into deep revision, many assumptions began to arise, including at the suggestion of Air Force Secretary Frank Kendall that the service is considering the possibility of creating a much less expensive aircraft in the price range of the F-35 or F-15EX, from $90 to $100 million per unit instead of the previously announced several hundred million dollars per tail. One of the advantages of the family of systems concept is that certain critical functions without which it was previously impossible to imagine a full-fledged fighter can now be distributed across several air platforms. For example, if the goal is getting a human in the loop within line of sight to control CCAs and manage the tactical ballet, a new generation fighter may not have radar or any other types of sensors of its own. Instead, radars, infrared search and track systems, ERST, and electronic support and electronic warfare measures can be dispersed among modular CCA drones and friendly aircraft operating in the vicinity of the NGAD fighter. Simply put, a kind of distributed payload. Speaking of that, in almost all references to the NGAD, there was talk of a heavy interceptor aircraft with an impressive range, at least the long-range version for sure. It was believed that it should carry a large payload inside the body to maintain stealth characteristics and deliver the most painful blows deep into enemy territory. But what if we move the lion's share of that payload to CCA? At a minimum, this will significantly reduce the size of the NGAD fighter, at the most, it'll save a lot of money for American taxpayers, not to mention that the decision to move weapons to drones will greatly reduce the risk for fighter pilots of being shot down by enemy air defenses. Reducing payload requirements and incorporating more CCA into the mission would also provide greater tactical flexibility 
While larger weapons such as long-range air-to-air missiles and contested zones could carry the B-21 Raider while the F-15 EX Eagle II fighters and B-52 Stratofortress bombers do the same along the outer edge of high-threat zones. The decision to launch weapons will be made by the PCA fighter pilot operating far ahead. Moreover, it doesn't even need to completely abandon its weapons. After all, 4-6 AIM-120 or AIM-260 with a couple of AIM-9X Sidewinder, as well as a couple of small-diameter bombs of the air-to-ground class, are quite enough for a fighter in case of unforeseen circumstances. Interestingly enough, during the revision of NGAD requirements, even such a sensitive topic as fuel reserve was discussed. It was planned that the new fighters would be equipped with enough fuel to operate without the help of tankers. However, with news of U.S. services working on a flying stealth tanker, the need to load NGAD fighters with impressive tanks may simply disappear. Among the additional methods of saving on the price of an American sixth-generation fighter, it's also worth mentioning the possibility of potential leveraging and adapting the F-35's Block 4 digital backbone and software, some communication systems and sensors, as well as scaling other functions. Recent aircraft where this approach has played an important role include the B-21 Raider bomber, whose development program used a combination of mature and semi-mature subsystems to speed up the aircraft's development process and keep costs reasonable. Lockheed Martin and Boeing competed for the role of creator of the future NGAD combat aircraft, and judging by recent news, the latter still managed to beat its competitor in this fierce struggle. This news was like a bolt from the blue. The fact that NGAD's fighter component was moving forward was already cool, but none of these companies had previously confirmed their participation in the competition. On March 21st of this year, U.S. President Donald Trump announced that work on the NGAD program was continuing and its central element, the PCA fighter, would be designated the F-47. The name pays tribute to the legendary World War II fighter, the Republic P-47 Thunderbolt, whose contribution to U.S. air superiority is rightfully included in the history books, marks the founding year of the United States Air Force, and recognizes the 47th president's critical support in the development of the world's first sixth-generation fighter. The first image of what is an F-47 showed us the aircraft from a frontal perspective. It has clearly visible wings with a high dihedral angle and swept-down tip, somewhat reminiscent of Boeing's YF-118G Bird of Prey experimental aircraft from the 1990s. There's also a noticeable hint of canard nose wings, which is typically not an optimal solution for stealth aircraft, but this did not prevent them from appearing more than once on previously presented concept art of possible NGAD fighter designs, including from Boeing itself. These canards would improve the aircraft's maneuverability and stability, which is especially important for the highly unstable tailless design, long identified as a key layout for the next generation fighter. On the other hand, it may well turn out that these elements will be only static devices not maneuvering as part of the flight control system, but primarily helping with lift during certain phases of flight. Judging by the image, the fighter will have a wide spade-shaped nose which can accommodate a large radar antenna as well as an impressive bubble canopy. Still exact data on how many crew members the F-47 will require has not yet been disclosed. Details about the value of the contract with Boeing remain unclear but preliminary estimates put development costs at over $20 billion. At the same time, President Trump said that he could not announce the exact volumes of F-47s that the service intends to receive, but confirmed that the new fighters will be purchased in large quantities. Interestingly enough, they even talked about the prospects of producing an export version of the F-47 for the Allies, which at one time was clearly lacking in the F-22 due to the secrecy of its subtle features. Although most likely, as in the case of previous American fighters, these versions will be slightly stripped down. Winning the NGAD competition could be Boeing's last chance to survive as a fighter jet manufacturer. Back in 2023, the company announced its intention to close production of the FA-18EF Super Hornet line, focusing on advanced combat aircraft. Perhaps even then, they were talking about the future F-47. Along with the news about the development of NGAD at the end of March, the information previously voiced by representatives of the U.S. Air Force was also confirmed regarding the successful flight of one of the fighter's prototypes in 2020. Additionally, Boeing has invested a lot of money and effort into its own plant in St. Louis, Missouri, obviously just to prepare it for the production of sixth-generation fighters. On the day the F-47 was announced, the U.S. President said the fighter's top speed would be around Mach 2, 
And a little later, one of the NGAD engine manufacturers, General Electric, said it was pleased to see the program moving forward and looked forward to the opportunities it would provide to power future fighters. Considering that earlier in 2024, the amount of contracts concluded with engine manufacturers Pratt & Whitney and General Electric was increased to $3.5 billion, we might very soon see the results of their work as part of the program to create new next-generation adapter propulsion and gap power plants. For now, we just have to wait for news from the U.S. Navy, which is currently developing its own sixth-generation fighter, FAXX, under the auspices of NGAD. It's unlikely that they'll hesitate to respond to the Air Force with their own. After all, nobody canceled friendly competition, right? What do you think about Boeing's choice as the manufacturer of the next U.S. fighter jet? Share your opinion in the comments, and if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and hit that notification bell for more content like today's. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.